Uh, they come to the yoga because they know it's healing um, and they can get benefit from it. And then they get better. And then sometimes they sort of drift away because they almost, without realizing it, have associations of a period of their time when they're in healing. Um, and they kind of associate the yoga with that healing. And then when they get better, they think, okay, I don't need the yoga anymore. And then, you know, over a period of time, and as you said with yourself, it might be a number of years later, you'll come back to the yoga and go, oh, actually, yeah, I can actually have a, a different relationship with the yoga practice now. And you'll find you'll end up having um, different insights into yourself through the practice. Hi, my name is Johnny Lawrence and welcome to another episode of Live Talk. Today I'm here with an old friend and uh, we just caught up briefly, but uh, we've got this to do. So how you doing, Jock? <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. Good. This is uh, Jock Orton from Limehouse Yoga. You're, um, you've got a nice little tagline on your Instagram. It's creating community through yoga. I love that. That's great. <laughs> thank you. That's what we do. So... Yeah, yeah, that really uh, is what you do. <laughs> a lot of people here um, and some amazing, amazing students. So that's what we've been doing over the last 10 years, creating this community feel to what we're doing at the studio. I mean, I was just saying to you before we uh, before we started to recording, um, I think it must have been about eight years ago I saw you. Is that is that right? Roughly then? I'm not sure if I had a second Probably. son. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. I mean, there's something I wanted to say before before we got into the recording, uh, before we got into the main bulk of things. But um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but around the time I came to you, um, I started to have a bit of an issue and became a bit unraveled. Um, I, I suffer from a fair bit of uh, childhood trauma. And when I had my son, uh, well, I didn't have her, have him, um, my wife did, so. <laughs> <laughs> but when she did, uh, it, it triggered me. And um, I went for a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of problems around that time I, I never made it known to you at the time but um obviously I found yoga through yourself and I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you because you helped me through a tough time um and doing yoga you know that two or three times a week spending time with you on a personal level you know I'm grateful for that you know I, I needed that at the time and uh, it's funny you don't often realize until well hindsight I suppose <laughs> yeah that's true yeah yeah, well, I'd like to say thank you. Oh, thank you for saying that. So it means a lot. It's um, it's something that's happened, you know, a lot of times when people, you know, they'll come to yoga for periods of time, and you know, we don't always get to know people's stories, um, because uh, people just aren't, you know, in that position to actually share them. So, and that's fine. They come to the practice. They come, uh, and we breathe and we move and kind of do the yoga practice together, and then, um. Pretty much like yourself, you know, you kind of haven't been for a number of years, but I know that there will come a time you'll come back again, you know, and that's happened so, so many times over the years. And then we kind of get to know a different side because sometimes what happens, people, um, you know, they come to the yoga because they know it's healing um, and they can get benefit from it. And then they get better. And then sometimes they sort of drift away because they almost without realizing it, have associations of a period of their time when they're in healing. Um, and they kind of associate the yoga with that healing. And then when they get better, they think, okay, I don't need the yoga anymore. And then, you know, over a period of time, and as you said with yourself, it might be a number of years later, you'll come back to the yoga and go, oh, actually, yeah, I can actually have a, a different relationship with the yoga practice now. And you'll find you'll end up having, um, different insights into yourself through the practice so you know it happens a lot of times so yeah thank you for sharing that I don't know what to say to that I had uh I'd never thought of it like that actually I'd never thought that obviously during that very tough time um that I might have associated the yoga with that that's that's uh that's uh blown my mind a bit actually <laughs> <laughs> oh you're welcome so it's um when uh, I'm sitting in this you know, amazing, amazing new studio, and uh, when we were going through the the funding process, we got um, we're very uh, thankful to be able to get some European funding. Um, and in the process of it, we had to get 
we had a, a little you know, um, problem with the planners. They didn't quite see our vision, didn't see it the same way as we did. So we actually asked our students, said, look, you know, would you mind writing some letters of support? And we were inundated with letters. We had about 160 letters of support. People were just going, no, I can't believe that you know, the planners don't see your, you know, the vision and what you're doing for the community here. Uh, and then people started writing their, their stories. Um, and Emma and I, Emma's my, my partner, <laughs> the, the co-director of Limehouse, we were literally in, in pieces reading these letters. They were so heartfelt. And then it's kind of, going, oh my God, I've never seen this person, no, week in, week out, they come several times a week. And then suddenly you read their story, you're like, oh, okay, that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's why we're actually doing the practice, you know, this kind of creating this, this amazing space for people to come together, come together and practice the yoga, breathe, move and, and heal. So... I got goosebumps. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't. I couldn't have put it better myself. As I said, you know, I went through some pretty significant trauma in my childhood, and when I had, when we had uh, our first child, it just opened up a whole can of worms, and I didn't know what to do. And you know, hearing you say healing, um, that's exactly what happened. Um, I went through a healing process because yoga gives you space for that. I believe it gave me space for it anyway. And don't get me wrong. You challenged me on a physical level too, <laughs> but uh, I've never had anyone own me like that before. I tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was quite something, but I mean, anyway, let's get into it. Uh, what was your journey towards yoga? Uh, we're talking about healing. Mine was definitely a, a healing process because, um, 20 years ago, uh, just over 20 years ago now, I had a quite a serious snowboarding accident. So I um, ended up breaking my back in numerous places and I shattered my uh, collarbone into literally into tiny pieces um, and ended up having this kind of journey, um, which went on for several years in that hospital, just trying to heal myself from those injuries um, and that's how I started doing the yogas um, I was literally I was bolted together with you know bits of metal work um, and I was still, still mobile I was still you know able thankfully I wasn't paralyzed um, but I was still um, having a lot of issues um, and then through I was in London and I was with a my oldest friend who I've known since I was like three years at his house and his mum came around and she was like really excited. She said, oh, I've just been to this yoga class and it's this, this hot yoga class and blah, blah. And this is now, if you do this for 30 days, you'll be healed from anything. I was like, okay, all right. Sounds interesting. So anyway, I went along and um, absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. And it was a bit cram class in North London. Um, <laughs> God knows what the, 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 yoga teachers were thinking because I walked in I had like 25 stitches going across my shoulder this kind of big elastic class from here to here um and they kind of saw me and in I don't you I've done hot yoga but hot yoga is like heated to like 105 degrees um and everyone's just wearing pretty much their swimwear and um <laughs> I walked in with this massive elastic class and they're like um are you injured? So I said, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just recovering from broken back and, you know, I've got some metal work holding my shoulder together. And they were like, well, are you sure you should be in the class? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. You know, <laughs> totally oblivious. But um, I did the practice. Now, halfway through the practice, I had this kind of elastoplast just kind of just slid down my chest because <laughs> it was just so sweaty and so hot. You know, I went out, towelled myself down, you know, put another elastoplast on, you know, because of bandage thing, covering up the, the stitches. Um, and that's how I got started. And I just started um, going to those you know, classes in North London, um, not knowing anything about yoga, didn't know about different styles or anything. I just assumed that all yoga was done in, you know, 105 degree heat um, and uh, just loved it and just kind of breathing and moving. And then, and that was my, that was the start of the journey. So, you know, I don't, I don't practice hot yoga now. Um, I know a lot of yoga, uh, yoga teachers kind of you know on um, on to uh because obviously the bikram himself who devised this style of yoga has been um uh i don't know the word uh disgraced i suppose it's a difficult one to <laughs> but, um, describe isn't it 
Yeah, so he's been disgraced, but uh, the, the style of yoga itself, you know, at the time, it was, a, it was a, my entry point into yoga, and that's the journey that I started, you know, 20 years ago, and on that, so since then, I've been doing um, all manner of uh, different styles, and, you know, I met my, uh, my main teacher in about 2003, um, who's Bridget Woods Kramer, who is just this phenomenal teacher, um, and I remember still going to the first class, and I've been practicing for about three years by that point I've been doing various Iyengar classes and various other bits and pieces here and there um, it's quite a shock when you go to a village hall and it's cold and dusty as opposed to 105 degree heat and um, but you know I did various styles and then I met Bridget and then first class I was blown away and just went she knows a lot of stuff so I need to practice and train with her so I enrolled in a um, after a short while I enrolled in a teacher training with her but that's all there was at the time. All I wanted to do, I didn't want to be a teacher and I wanted to um, just learn more about yoga because I knew how like, the benefits of the healing effect that it was having on me. You know, I was in that hospital having various operations still, you know, whilst I was practicing. Um, but I knew it was getting me better um, and I just loved it. And, I, and that's why I enrolled on this teacher training with her. And that's, I was like the, um, the, the person that was just there just to learn more about yoga and eventually after a couple of yoga teach trainings Bridget kind of sprung it on me um she's like right you're uh, you're covering the class this Saturday I'm like no I'm not <laughs> no, there's no way I'm going up in front of a load of people and teaching uh, a yoga class now I may have done the teach trainings but I'm not going to be a yoga teacher and then she said well there's nobody else to do it so you better you better do it I was like Okay, so I, <laughs> I remember rocking up and uh, it was like a Saturday morning. And Bridget's like a world-renowned teacher. Like the, the room was full, you know. They were there to see Bridget and they've got this, um, you know, some guy s sitting in front of them, sweating profusely because there was like this big kind of windows behind me. The sun was beating on my back, you know, just going, oh my God, what am I doing? Um, and I don't remember anything about the class whatsoever, but I just remember the feeling I had after the class and loving it. Um, and I thought, yeah, this is what I need to be doing. And then that's, that was kind of the, the start. And every year I always, you know, I, I consider myself a, a yoga student who happens to teach. You know, and now nice. I'm, yeah, look, we've got a, we've got a training um, that literally we just did uh, some of the, the second round um, or the second cohort, some of the exams yesterday for our Limehouse yoga teacher training. So they were doing some of the exams yesterday. Um, so we're teaching other people to become teachers. Um, so yeah, it's pretty, it's a, it's a journey. It's definitely a, um, it's a, a process that has been um, healing, cathartic, as, as you said earlier, now I've challenged you on a physical level. Mm. Um, but it's much more than that, you know. Originally, I kind of I started my yoga practice as a as a healing modality because I realised that it was um, giving me benefit. Because yeah. um, I, you know, I was going through the the medical process of trying to work out because I had all sorts of problems. Um, my back was actually okay, but my you know, with the, all the metal work that was holding my shoulder together, um, I kept having, um, you know periods of my arm, I'd literally lose power in my arm. You know, I'd have something called thoracic outlet syndrome. So, you know, I'd literally just, my arm would just become completely dead. You know, it's like, that. You know, I'm sure you've had it when you wake up in the middle of the night and your yeah. arm is useless. You know, you've been lying on it awkwardly. Um, I'd have that in the middle of the day, you know, it just suddenly it would just go boom and stop. Cause there was so much, um, the body was in this process of healing and with the, the clavicle, because it was in so many different pieces and there was this metal work up here and the, the body was creating lots of calcium um, and it's called, they call it stenosis and, um, and it was pushing down onto the, the main nerve which led you know, my arm. So if there's no nerve flow to the arm, um, it doesn't work. Um, but I knew that when you do a yoga practice, uh, you kind of align yourself and you breathe correctly uh, and you hold yourself in a um, different way and once you start learning about the body you're like okay I can actually start getting to the point of holding myself the posture of myself slightly differently 
um, and I was able to alleviate some of the the, uh, the problems with this thoracic, thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, and yeah, I was able to you know get rid of it without having any more major intervention. I mean, one of the reasons yeah. I came to you originally was because I'd had a pro wrestling career and my back was pretty uh, was pretty gnarly. <laughs> and uh, I tried many other things. I tried strengthening it. I tried my version of uh, creating flexibility and mobility. And uh, someone said to me, and it's interesting, I met this person who told me I should come to Limehouse Yoga and I've never seen them since. I'm pretty sure that you put them in my life. <laughs> There's some sort of plant. But I mean, I came along and I mean, there's so much to yoga that really surprised me. I came in with, I'm ashamed to say, the typical alpha male approach of what's all this about? I'll do it because, you know, it sounds like it might help and all that sort of stuff. But it, my mind was opened as I was in there because there was, uh, firstly, there was, I wasn't the only bloke in there, but people were just so kind and outgoing. And it was a bit, it was a bit daunting at first because people, had got, I remember sitting down on this mat and I was looking around, I didn't really know many people. And this lady just looks at me square in the eye and she went, you've got such a lovely smile. And I was like, uh, thanks. <laughs> but it's just like, that's some kindness that I'd never really experienced. And everyone was just so so happy and chilled and just it was just a really nice vibe and I think that's what gave me the ability not you know obviously the physical stuff's obvious you know I was pushed um you know I've been a former wrestler flexibility wasn't something I had a lot of <laughs> and uh, uh so, it helped. sorry <laughs> it would have helped in your career I'm sure oh it would have you... no well it's a, it's a different thing isn't it as you get older, you realise these things. You realise, you know, when you're younger, you can't convince a young bloke that flexibility is important. It's all about muscles and strength and all that sort of stuff. But, I mean, what I got physically was was fairly obvious. Um, but, like I said, it was it was the, um, the psychological benefits that surprised me. Um, just the stuff at the end where you got to lie there and be mindful. That may have been the first time in my entire life where I was ever forced to just lie there and not do anything uh, in what I would describe as meditation but it sort of was sort of wasn't it was just being still having time to pause and and at first the first couple of times I found that really uncomfortable I'm not gonna lie I, I'd be opening my eyes and looking around and trying to figure out what was going on <laughs> and uh, after a while when I braced it that's when I started to get the benefits that's when I you know doors started to unlock and things started to happen but going back to your journey, I mean, what was the most valuable thing that you think you learned uh, from from your mentor? Oh, from, um, see, I didn't really, Bridget was uh, also my principal teacher, but I've had so many different teachers over the years. Now, a lot of the um, teachers that I hang out with, you know, are quite a bit older than me, uh, and they make me look completely stiff. You know, I'm looking at some of these people um, who are like in their 70s and they are just so unbelievably fit, so unbelievably, you know, the strength and flexibility and the mobility they've got and the clarity of mind, you know, yeah, I want to be like them. You know, that's where I'm aiming. You know, I'm 48 now, uh, 47, somewhere, late 40s, going next step 50. Um, you know, you know I just, I, I'm able to do stuff now that, you know, if somebody had said to me when I was 26, when I, yeah, 26 when I started. So um, if somebody said, oh, you know, jump forward 20 odd years, um, then I don't think I would have believed them. <laughs> you know, I was in a uh, kind of a, a dark, dark place where I smashed myself up. And then obviously the teachers that I've had, I don't know, um, in answer to your question about what the the biggest thing from mentors, just kind of the stability, I think, of actually having, just being around those people. It's not necessarily, I can't think of like one thing that they've actually said. Um, there's probably been numerous things. And sometimes I've, I remember having conversations with, with Bridget and it generally wasn't in the class. It was generally like, before or most times after the class, you know, I'd end up with having questions. And you know, I was definitely one of those people that wouldn't, I wouldn't stand up in a, a room full of people uh, and talk. 
you know, that would have scared the life out of me. Um, so, I'd, you know, I'd have these questions and, um, you know, I was always thankful when, you know, I'd have some, you know, some of us have a question in class and somebody else would ask the question. You know, that was the set of questions. Like, oh, thank God they've asked the question because I didn't want to actually speak up in front of all these people. But <laughs> conversations that I would have afterwards, Bridget was so um, kind and just kind of, uh, but with her time as well, just kind of very generous uh, and the generosity of the time. I remember there was one particular... Uh, it was, uh, I lived about a 45 minute journey from where she had her studio. Um, and there was one evening and it was, oh, it was a hideous night. It was like really thick fog. Um, and it was dark and it was just one of those North Cornwall coast evenings where you can't see, literally you can't see your hand in front of your face. Um, and I drove to the studio and I got there and I was the only person there. I was the only person to rock up. Uh, bearing in mind that she's a world-class teacher and normally has like a room full of people. Um, and she had looked at me and she went, if you, you know, she knew where I lived. She went, you've driven all the way down. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she went, okay, cool. Let's go, I'll go and do a practice. And then she actually was the first person to take me through the Ashtanga primary series. Um, and because uh, at the time she was a, well, she still is an Anusara teacher, which is just a, another style of yoga. But she used to practice Ashtanga. So she said, come and practice next to me, put your mat next to me and we'll practice side by side. And she just took, took me through. And I remember kind of, you know, falling my way through the practice and, you know, <laughs> and it's hard, you know. Um, but I thought, you know, she could have quite easily just said, oh, actually, there's just, no, would you mind, you know, there's only one of you. But she was just super kind. We did a full practice and, and knowing her, we probably went on for a lot longer than the hour and a half designated because she was um, famous or infamous for overrunning. I don't know which one term to use. But I remember once there was a, it was the middle of the summer and the class was meant to go on for an hour and a half. And uh, I left the studio and it was dark, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, wow, you know, and we just go into this little time warp and it was three hours of yoga yeah. um, and she, you know, charged like for an hour and a half. It's funny because yeah. I remember that about coming to yours, though, not not the overrun thing as much. I mean, we did used to overrun, but it was it was it was uh, it was more, as you say, that time in the kitchen afterwards with the chai tea. And I, and I still talk about that now with people. And I say, yeah, and we sat there. And I mean, and in a way, that's kind of where the secondary learning comes from, isn't it? Because you ask yeah. questions and that's where the spiritual stuff comes in. And, you know, you talk about different things and uh, yeah, it's good for the soul, I think. And, and, and the chai tea was, ama- I've never been able to make it the same ever in my life. <laughs> I don't know what you did to that. <laughs> oh, we can get, we often give out the recipe. It's just a, a series of um, spices. Yeah, but, it was fantastic, and you you can't buy that in the shops, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no, you can't. It's um, but that's one of the things that we've done in with Limehouse. Like Emma, my partner, is an amazing chef. Um, so, and it's part of the the process of what we're trying to achieve here is actually, you know, we do yoga, yes, and you know, we um do that. Everyone knows we do that, but we also like to feed people and kind of you know serve people and actually make sure that the you know, we have to give them delicious food and chai and everything else. And it's that process of creating friendships yeah. and community, not just from myself to, you know, the students, but also amongst each other. And we've, you know, we've been the kind of the, the hub and from us, we've created you know, countless friendships and, you know, and uh, yeah, we've had, we've been around for a while. We've had, you know, the usual, the births, deaths, marriages, all of it, all of the above, and you become part of the, the fabric of people's lives, really. Yeah, I mean that that was that was one of the things I was going to say. I mean, what 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 made you create Limehouse Yoga? Because it isn't just you're absolutely right. It's not a yoga studio. It almost feels silly to call it that because it, it's like a whole um, ecosystem of of well, embo- embodying sort of what your ethos is. And and yoga doesn't feel right to me. Or oh, yes, it is yoga. It's exceptional yoga, but it you know, like you say, it's, it's the chai, it's the food, it's the company, it's the inspiration, it's the support. And some of the things that 
used to do in the garden, the garden parties. I mean, they were what they were amazing. <laughs> you know, they, they were great. And, and it, it, no, it wasn't just about you know going having drinks. It was just about like I, I say the word that jumped into my head then was inhibitions. Like I witnessed some things, people doing things that I never thought they would ever do. Like you say, talking publicly, doing silly dances, having fun, just you know, having a good time and just being free, you know, it was a nice feeling. So what brought you to create Limehouse in the first place? I, I think it's an organic process. We started 10 years ago. We've got, you know, we're fortunate. We've got, you know, um, you know seven acres of land here. We've got the farmhouse and we had this um, room on the, built on the back of the, the farmhouse, which we converted into the studio. So this small room is like, I don't know, seven and a half meters by five and a half meters. Um, so it's not huge, you know. I think when it was at max capacity, we like to have like 16 people in there. Um, you know, we've had, I think the most we had was 25 in there and it's pretty compact and bijou and everyone's, you know, there's no social distancing happening <laughs> whatsoever and it's at that, at that level. You know, you've got to be getting friendly, you know, it's all high, you know, right next to people. But um, you know, it's an organic, just organic process that, we wanted to create um, a place for where people could come and practice. And we've had um, tens of thousands of people, literally tens of thousands of people are coming to us um, over the years. And it's built up that we have people from, you know, amazing teachers, world renowned teachers um, come to us um, into this beautiful place. And it does help that we are in a, a beautiful place in, in, in Britain, down in Cornwall. Um, we've got magnificent landscapes. We're really close to the beach. Um, and people just come down and they just want to share in this kind of community feel. And when they come down, uh, I hope that what we want to achieve is that wherever you're from, you can actually come down and you feel like you're part of this community. Yeah, it's a destination um, place, isn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, Cornwall's one of those places, as you know, you've lived here for a long time now. Um, you can't just, you're not going to just, you know, by chance happen up, you know, in Cornwall, you know, you might, you know, you can drive through somewhere, you could drive through Devon, or you could drive through Dorset, and you'll end up in, you know, Hampshire, or, you know, wherever, um, Dorset, whatever, but you're going to end up in Cornwall, you, you are coming to Cornwall, because it's, you're coming to Cornwall. Yeah. And people love coming down here because we've just got this amazing landscape around us. And I think it's the, a lot of, um, without sounding too hippie, but there's a lot of energy in, in this kind of area where we are, this kind Agreed. of people come in. And just that kind of feeling of grounding, you know, so many people have come here, and literally as soon as they walk in the door, you can almost see them just take this massive exhale. They're like, oh, oh we're here, you know, we're home. Yeah. And that's what, that's why we created it. And, lot, you know, and we've had, um, it, you know, we've got this whole studio here that is <laughs> slightly ironic that we've had uh, this whole new, stu uh, new studio built and um, with social distancing, we're still at the same numbers that we were at in the old studio. <laughs> we still have, <laughs> we still have like, you know, a max of 16 to possibly 18 people here, all socially distancing. So, and uh, Emma, because it used to get to the point where Emma would come and practice in the classes, but it got to the point where it was so busy that she couldn't come, you know. Oh. <laughs> and now it's got to the same, it's just like, this is ridiculous. We've just put this new studio, and we're obviously with social distancing. I still can't come to the classes. Oh. It's like, all right, we'll, we know it's going to change and we'll get to the point when it'll we all weathers the storm and we've you know obviously through technology we've been able to keep the community together um and then we will come out the other side of it you know we're in a kind of a, a dark spot at the moment um but it will come back together and we'll have all those garden parties again we'll have you know this though know, last year we missed it we obviously for every uh solstice you no know, summer and winter we always wanted to create um just a, a party to say thank you to everyone yeah. and just I to bring that Bring the families and just enjoy each other company and i used to um just enjoy 
the fact that people would come and because if they came like on Tuesday night, they wouldn't obviously, and you'd have their your sort of designated night where some people would only come like once a week and they wouldn't realize that I don't know what you mean. Um, on a th Thursday, sorry, uh, on a Thursday, you'd have a complete bunch of, a different bunch of people. And then on the solstices, they'd all come together and go, oh, I didn't know you came to Limehouse. So, oh, what night do you come? Oh, I come on a Tuesday. Oh, I come on a Thursday. And then you go, oh, yeah. And then they'll go, oh, I've met you before. You know, I've that seen happened you to me. That actually happened to me. That exact situation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I so, mean, I, I just think what you're doing is incredible. You've obviously invested not only a lot of time, love and passion into what you're doing, but obviously a lot of money by the look of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. uh, you know, it is a shame that this um, pandemic has hit at this time, but I suppose you've still managed. If I know you like I think I do, I think you've probably found a way to make it work anyway, to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah. I mean, the, la the last question really where I was going was, um, what goals do you have for the future? You've built this beautiful place. You obviously had a vision. What what are the goals for the future for, for both yourself and your and your clientele? Um, once we kind of you know we've got we've got obviously the the, the studio itself is you no know, ninety nine percent finished. There's still a little bit more work to do. But once we kind of get beyond the, the building of I want to you know we've created this space for um, this you know, this area that I want people to come down. I want people to come from all over the world. Yeah. You know, I want to create a center where it's a community of like-minded people from literally all four corners of the world can come here and practice and, and, and meet one another on, on the level, on the mat, and just breathe and move together um, and learn and, and grow. That's what I want to do. That's what we're aiming to create. And we will, you know, I've got absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever that this is going to be uh, just this place that people will want to come to. Yeah, I mean, Cornwall never has to sell itself. Um, and in my opinion, once you've been to Limehouse Yoga, you, you, you're you not going to need selling on that either. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, I know, I know exactly what you mean. Um, listen, Thank you so much for your time today, Jock. Um, I'm sorry it's taken me such a long time to get in contact. <laughs> but, right. but as you say, um, I realise now I've been healing for eight years. <laughs> uh, so thanks for the head, thanks for the heads up. But um, uh, just plug your social media or any links that you want to get out there so people can find you. Yeah, obviously we've got the website, limehouseyoga.com. Uh, most of the time we're on, uh, there's Instagram, which is Limehouse Yoga. Um, well, Facebook began Limehouse Yoga. Just type in Limehouse Yoga, and you'll you'll find us somewhere on the on the on the web. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I try not to have too much uh, in, input into the social medias. Um, it's not really my forte. We mate, post. I can't think of anything funnier than you sat there on Instagram trying to work out what to post. <laughs> Yeah, we pay somebody else. We've got a lady called Annie who's yeah. amazing at it. She does it. She's been doing a great job. We've uh, in in lockdown, we actually um, employed somebody um, to come and do a lot of the administration um, and try and take some of the burden off myself and Emma to do that. So yeah, just look up Limehouse Yoga and you'll you'll see what we're up to. We've got a training um, starting um, in, in March, which is a call it. PIP, which is a practitioner immersion program. So rather than doing a teacher training this year, we're going to be doing this, um, essentially what I wanted to do at the very beginning, rather than me doing a teacher training, you know, I wanted to learn more about yoga. So if I'd have had the opportunity to do a, you know, a practitioner immersion program, uh, I would have done that. So that's what we've um, used our time in lockdown to devise this new program. Um, so people can come, they can learn more about the, the practices, more about the philosophy, um, more about the practice themselves. So they can, you know, just have this immersive experience without having the, the stress of having to write essays and exams and everything else. So that's what we're doing. And we've got lots of workshops and masterclasses. And, um, and hopefully when we get back together, when we can do, um, you know, get rid of social distancing, we can start running the retreats again. We can start inviting people down because we've got you know we've got accommodation here but obviously at the moment we're unable to use it so that's the what we're going to be doing this year well that's something to look forward to when uh, not only when coronavirus is uh, is gone and all this is uh, over with we can look forward to a bit of limehouse yoga that'd be great <laughs> but jock oh, thank, 
thank you so much, mate. I really appreciate it. And uh, we must catch up again soon. Oh, it's good talking to you. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you.